God, hallelujah. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. Just give him praise. Just give him your worship. Forget about what happened yesterday. Forget about what happened this morning. God says, lay it down right now. He says, lay it down. Lay it down. Lay it down, says the Lord. Hallelujah. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. Clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice. Let all the earth rejoice. Cause how great, how great is our God. Is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. Always see how great, how great. Show. 
God. Hallelujah, glory to God. But God, it shall go out, glory to God. Hallelujah, and reach the lost, glory to God. Reach the lost, glory to God. Somebody may be sick in their body, God, and just hear the word of God. Hallelujah, that they may be healed. Hallelujah, glory to God. You said in your word, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. If there's any among us that's sick, glory to God, to call on the elders, glory to God. And we shall come together and pray one for another, glory to God. We thank you, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. We pray right now, glory to God. Hallelujah, as we celebrate this memorial weekend, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. God, glory to God, that you will, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. Touch the minds of the families, glory to God. They have lost ones, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. They have served for our country, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. Give them a touch of your love, glory to God. Let them know, glory to God, that they are not alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're not alone, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. We're not alone, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. We thank you, glory to God. We thank you for what you're going to do on today, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. Hey, glory to God. Thank you, glory to God. For life, glory to God. Thank you for your protection, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. In season and out of season, glory to God. We thank you, glory to God. Hallelujah. As we rose on this morning, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. In our right mind, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. We give you praise right now, Father. We give you praise, glory to God. Hallelujah, bless this service, glory to God. Oh God, as we usher her songs of Zion unto your people, glory to God. Bless our voices, glory to God. Bless the musicians, glory to God. Bless the ushers, glory to God. Bless the greeters, glory to God. Bless everyone, glory to God. Under the sound of my voice, glory to God. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, glory to God. And I dare not leave out, hallelujah, glory to God. The woman of God who stands beside her man of God, hallelujah. My pastor Jan, glory to God. Hallelujah, we praise God for her on today, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. For helping us usher in the spirit of God today. Glory to God. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way, Holy Ghost. We'll be so ever careful to praise your holy name. To praise your holy name. Glory to God. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. 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 Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great.
that he comes into the room, we stand. When we are before the Father, we need to stand before his presence, giving him all the glory and all the honor. All the glory and all the honor. Hallelujah, God. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. We magnify your name. We magnify your name. We make your name great because there is power in your name. There is power in the name of Jesus. When the demons tremble, when we say the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. We come to magnify the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. We magnify you, Lord. Glory. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 We come to magnify the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Let's come together. Hallelujah. And magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, 
like to follow along. Verse 8. Will a man rob God, yet have robbed thee? But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offering? Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there, there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will open the of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. That means hallelujah. He will give us hallelujah if we will abide by his word. And his word don't go back, back to him void. Hallelujah. What he said in his word is true. Hallelujah. So give today, today, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he will give back to you. If it's not in monies, if it's not in, it's not always in monies. It could be your life. It could be your spouse's life. It could be your kid's life. It could just be something else besides money. So we can't look for monies all the time because he will bless you in other ways. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have seen him. Hallelujah. Even down to my little pennies, I have seen him blessed as I give my tithes and my offering. Hallelujah. You give above on your offering, and that will, that's where most of, more, more of your blessings will come in at. Hallelujah. But do exactly what he say do, and let him show you what he'll do for you. And hallelujah. We want to bless your name. And there are different ways on um, Facebook, I think, um, that the, there's different ways to put your tithes and offering for God of Deliverance Ministry. And we want to thank you right now for giving. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, this morning. Hallelujah. For the blessings, hallelujah, that you have for us all, Lord God. Lord God, let us all have in our hearts, Lord God, to abide by your word, hallelujah and see you, hallelujah, see you for who you are. In your blessed name, amen. Glory. You're worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Yes, yes, yes. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, put your hands together and give God a glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Well, how many of you know that God is my everything? Oh, our everything. My hallelujah. People, my lawyer, my doctor, hallelujah. my best friend, my healer, my deliverer, yeah, my way maker, my promise keeper. Oh, hallelujah. He is the light. Amen. In a dark way. Amen. He is the truth. He's the light in the tunnel. Yes. Amen. 
So today, come on, put your hand together. Hallelujah. Sing, Brother Mike. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
to know that he's still right there. Come on, tell your neighbor, neighbor, even when you can't see him, he's still right there. Even when you can't feel him, his hands are still on you. Oh, I wish I could get a praise in the building. Ah, yes, he is. My God, he's that kind of God. The kind of God that'll show up when you least expect it. He's that kind of God. That God that will heal your body. He's that kind of God that'll make things work in your favor. He's that kind of God that make ends meet to me. Come on, somebody. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. He's that kind of God that'll make a way out of no way. He's that that kind of God. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I just want you to taste him. I just want you to try him. Because this water you drink, you'll never have to thirst. Oh, I wish I could get a praise in the building. You'll never have to thirst ever again in your life. Yes. He's that kind of God. Oh yes, he's that kind of God. 
I don't know. I seem to be stuck right there. He's that kind of God. He's a miracle worker. He's a soul regulator. He's that kind of God. He'll turn your world around. Because he's that kind of God. That God will visit you. And help you. And make answers out of no way for you. He's that kind of God. Oh Lord. Put those hands together and say thank you. Lord have mercy. Oh God. Brother Don, turn the air conditioner. Everybody pulling out the fans because we done worked up a Holy Ghost lather. <laughs> Somebody say a Holy Ghost lather. Amen. I don't come to tell you what to do. But if you confuse, just look at what I do. I'm coming to praise the Lord. You ought to testify to somebody said, I've had victory all week. I've got victory all week. And I'm looking forward to tomorrow because it's just going to add some more victory. I wish I could get somebody to shout right now. Woo! Go ahead, Brother Jerry. Woo! When doctors say no, God says yes. Woo! He's that kind of God. Woo! That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. That's why there's a value in coming to the building. Woo! That's it, that's it. Woo! My, 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 my. Put them up, put them down, put them up. Woo! Come on, give God a praise. Lord have mercy. I heard the whole story. But John went to a church that didn't believe in shouting. And my God, when he heard the word, he started praising God. They tried to hold him down. But they went to his house and said, John, you can't shout in our church. But John said, listen here. Hold my mule. And I'm going to shout right now. Anybody feel like shouting right now? Go ahead and shout right now. Woo! That's it, Tiny. Go ahead, put it in, put it in. Woo! Send that timber up. My, my, my. Yeah, 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 yeah. Woo! God is good. My Lord. My, my, my. Good to give God praise. Good to give him a shout every now and then. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, oh Lord. He's that kind of God. He'll take away your sadness and give you some gladness. Won't he do it? Tell your neighbor, won't he do it? Yes, he will. Anybody got a yes, he will? I got a yes, he will in my spirit. Yes, he will fix it. Yes, he will straighten it out. Yes, he will give it to you. Yes, he will say yes. Yes, he will open doors. Oh, somebody say yes, he will. If you don't stop playing like that, I'm not going to be able to get to this word today. <laughs> Somebody says it's all right to shout if you feel like it. We don't shout every day. But my God, when it comes time to putting them up and putting them down, 
You better go on and jump on in. Stop waiting until later. They got a candy call now and later. Ah, but I'm gonna do it now. Woo! Mm. Grab your neighbor and sit him down. My Lord, good God Almighty, shouting good time. Tell your neighbor, that's all right. Let's shout in church. That's all right. Let's dance in church. That's all right. Let's roll around in church. That's all right. Let us run around the church. However, the Lord bless you. We just going to bless you also and join right on in. <laughs> Come on, give God a good hand clap. Thank you. Amen. God is such an awesome God. I feel good this morning. I, I know I'm not by myself by the way y'all been carrying on in here. Woo! Hallelujah. You better get it in while you can. Stop waiting for something special to happen. You better get it out while you can. I heard about a dish detergent. It's called shout. Sometimes you got to shout this stuff out. Let me get on with the text. My God, I feel good in my soul. It is amazing that you can have something that hits your life and then God can turn around and just, boom, give you that power. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You be down in the dungeon and all of a sudden you get in the presence of the saints. And where the saints of God gather together, God gives us a promise that he'll show up. And I don't know about you, but every time God showed up in the Bible, he didn't show up by himself. I don't know about you, but I love to see somebody shouting, getting excited with me. Because the Bible says where two, amen, will touch and agree. Uh, it guarantees a presence. Look at your neighbor's a neighbor. Can I get with you in a shout right quick? Come on, give God a good quick praise right there. Come on, get him right there in the music booth. Can you, can you give him a praise right there? Woo! Can you give him a praise in that back row? Can you give him a praise right there? Can you give him a praise right here in the front row? Can you give him one right now? Can you give him one in the middle aisle? Can you give him one right now? Can you give him one in the booth over there? Can you give him one right now? Hey! Woo! My, my, my. Yes! That's it! Woo! God is good. Oh, yes, he is. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Woo. Sound like Jesus. Come on, tell somebody, sounds like Jesus. Woo. He's good to me. That's why I don't mind giving him glory. I put those hands together and thank them. My Lord. Boy, somebody came ready today with their sneakers on. Ah, I'm not ashamed of this gospel. For it's the power of God known unto salvation to everyone that believeth. I love being around believers because it unleashes the power of God. You can come in this place burdened and leave out lifted if you just give him a chance and get away from your sorrows and your pain and just let him in. Because that's all it takes is just to let him, to let him in. I know that the songwriter wrote, I've had some good times and I've had some bad. 
Oh, anybody know what that songwriter was saying? But he said, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Amen. Because he's faithful, he's caring, and he's kind. That's why we love him. Because he's all those things and more. Because he's greater than your expectation. He's greater than our praise. And he can fly faster than you can fall. And I'm so glad to have the Lord on our side. If you have that testimony, give him a praise and let's give God the glory. I like to use for our message text on today is that God has his hands on you. David knew that God's presence was real. He knew that if he made his bed in hell that God would be there. If I fly to the other most parts of the east or the west, God would be there. There's no escaping the presence of God. And in knowing that, we need to really realize that God has his hands on us. It is so amazing that we sometimes question God's presence. Seems like when we're doing well, God is high and lifted up. But when we run into life every now and then, seems like people began to wonder, God, where are you? But I am convinced that God never takes his hands off us. Sometimes we can get so used to him that we can't even feel him. But we ought to walk in one duration of the ability of God. Some things that we take so much for granted. If we would only acknowledge how blessed we are. I, I, I got to say that again because as I have been watching the news, I, as I have been watching people in life and how some of these programs that we see where people look like they're living in a different world. And it brings clarity that the Bible is right. We are in the world, but we're not of the world. Because when you see some of the things that the enemy has clouded the minds of so many people that it's not, nothing about righteousness and holiness. It's about making you feel good, whether it's right or whether it's wrong. It has gotten so powerful in our society that even our government are making legislational laws that sanctions the disobedience to God. But my Bible does not change. My Bible still tells me that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. And so I want to talk to those who have been holding on. I want to talk to those that are facing challenges because of what you believe. I don't know if you really can catch a glimpse of the future, but I can see that the enemy is trying to bring back laws to restrict the gospel. I see governmental laws getting in place to stop freedom of worship. They've already started attacking freedom of speech. It's not too long after that they're going to come after the freedom of religion. But I'm so glad that they're coming after religion, but not my relationship. I wish I could talk to somebody. I, I, you can take the religion, but you can't take my relationship. You can't take my relationship because it's is connected to a God that loves relationship. I think the first creation that God made was a relationship with a man. 
Uh, his name was called Adam, and after Adam, he said, I got to make you a family. So God is, a, you ought to tell somebody, God is about relationship. He's so much involved in relationship that he even gives it in the word of God in Revelation, where he said, I made you for my pleasure. Oh, God, somebody ought to say thank you. Tell your never neighbor. I'm the apple of his eye. <laughs> Woo! God Almighty. God has his hands on you. I want to go to a text in the word of God to relate my message to the heart of your, your people. The Bible says, amen, in Mark chapter 9, Verse 17, and one of the multitude answered and said, I want you to stop right there for a moment and I want you to acknowledge that there was a crowd. God loves to show up when a crowd don't seem to believe. He comes in the midst of the crowd and he said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son. Sons in those times and even now are very important because they carry on the legacy of the father. And here we see a father, amen, and I want to just assume that it might have been his only son. The Bible says that, amen, I have brought unto thee my son, which have a dumb spirit. Mm -hmm. this, this spirit has been released even in the world today. What do you mean, preacher? Like never before this dumb spirit. The devil has made people deaf to the voice of God and dumb to the truth of God. <laughs> Are you hearing the Holy Ghost yet? And because of this rebellious spirit, People are doing like they did in the books of Judges. Every man does what he seems right in his own eyes. Uh, you can't tell me I'm wrong because I like what I do. Uh, you can't tell me how to do what I do because you ain't my mama, you ain't my father, and you sure ain't my God. And this is the kind of attitude that many are carrying today. The spirit of subjection and submission are no longer a priority in people's lives. The attitude of witchcraft is plaguing the earth. It's a practice that is going on because disobedience and rebellion are a form of witchcraft. They even got some so-called saints locked up in the spirit of rebellion. So we see here this caring father. I, I should have been preaching this message maybe on Father's Day. But the Bible tells me that this father really cared. For it says, amen, in Mark chapter 9, verse 18. And it says, and whether, whithersoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. The devil is in the business of making people dysfunctional. Uh, Y'all don't hear me. Do you hear what I'm saying? He's in the practice of messing your life up. He wants to tear it apart. Cause you to gnash with your teeth. What do you mean when people are gnashing and grinding their teeth? It's because they're not happy and they are in distress. Wish I could talk to somebody this morning. Uh -huh. See, when sin came into the world, it brought a decline, amen, which causes death in the end. And our bodies are not made to last forever. Well, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's not going to last forever. But see, if you don't get this understanding quick, the devil will use the decline to make you doubt that there even is a God. I wish I could talk to somebody. Because many people are living in fantasy, amen, so that they can continue to live in entertainment until life hits them. Uh -huh. 
because I've come to understand that faith without truth is not a workable partnership. Can I talk to somebody? What do you mean, preacher? Jesus said, I am the way and that I am the truth. No man, I wish I could get an answer here, cometh unto the Father except through Jesus. But because of the delusion, because of the trickery, because of the deception, man has come to the conclusion that there's many ways to go. I wish I could talk to somebody. What are you talking about, preacher? The Bible is still right. Come on, tell your neighbor, neighbor, the Bible is still right. Uh -huh. What do you mean in Luke chapter 18, verse 8? The Bible says, yes, he will answer them quickly. See, we got to understand something about God showing up. Can you look at somebody and just tell them God answers your prayer? But maybe not the way you would straighten it out. Not the way you might fix it. Not the way you might try to blend it all together. But how many know God will do something right now that will benefit you 25 years down the road? I wish I could talk to somebody. See, you're looking for temporary relief, and God is looking for your eternal relief. He said, I come speedily. How fast is God moving? He moved already and left. You don't even know. That's how fast he's moving. I'll never forget Muhammad Ali was talking to the uh, announcer. What's that, 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 that man's name? Hey Amen. Back in the day, Howard Cosell. They made each other famous. And he said, he said, Muhammad, he said, how fast are you? He said, I'm so fast. Do you want me to see how fast I am? He said, what? Well, yeah. He said, I, I'm going to hit you. You ready? He said, yeah. He said, I did it already. That's how fast God somebody he's moving on your behalf right now faster than lightning faster than light itself Ooh, good God of money but let me get back to the text the Bible says but they quest but the question is when I the Messiah return uh-huh how many will I find who have faith and are praying See, we know how to praise God when everything is hitting in all cylinders. But as I said, the body is not designed to last forever. So when things began to happen in the natural realm in your life, if you don't understand the principle that you're not going to live here forever, many are going to turn back to their own vomit. There is no God. There is, if there was a God, why is this? Why is that? And see, the enemy uses this opportunity to be able to persuade the unbeliever that there's no God. But when you understand God has his hands on you, when you understand that even in a fallen world, the power of darkness can't cloud your judgment, why? Because we are looking, amen, many of the people who are going through are looking for relief. But see, we understand that when we walk with God, relief is always, every, uh, always present. Why? Because he said, I'm going to give you peace. I wish I could talk to somebody. Can I talk to any storm people? What do you mean storm people? People that can go through a storm and don't lose their composure. Why? Because God has his hands on you. How many times did you want to quit? But God had his hands on you. How many times did you didn't think you could make it? But God had his hands on you. When you were sick and couldn't get well. How many times did God have his hand? So many are looking for relief. But they're not looking for God. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I'm glad he's not talking about you. <laughs> but let me get back to the text. 
The text declared, sit down because you're going to make me shout and the organ is ready to rock and roll. I want you to look at Mark chapter 9, verse 19. The Bible says, he answered him, talking about Jesus, and said unto him, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? I'm so glad he wasn't talking to the Father. As I meditated over this scripture, God began to show me the reason Jesus used the word generation is because the crowd that was in the presence were non-believers. The scribes and the Pharisees, the hecklers, amen, those that wanted to do Jesus harm. Amen. Just because they saw the disciples not able to do what Jesus did, they began to try to convince the people, don't follow him. I wonder how many times the enemy tried to get you not to follow Jesus. How many times he caused situations to make you doubt the ability of God. Well, here we see that Jesus is now in the presence of this gentleman. And he said, how long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. I want somebody that's a a, a, a parent, amen, whose children may not be obedient. Keep bringing them before the altar. Woo, tell somebody, keep bringing them before the altar. Don't stop praying for them. Don't stop pleading for them. Don't stop believing for them. Because Jesus said, I am no wise. Cast him out. Bring him. Bring her. Bring them to me. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, when God got his hands on you, he's setting a stage. Mm, 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 mm. It's something to have, amen, a show, and nobody shows up. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, when God is trying to present you, he's got to bring a crowd. <laughs> oh, I, I, that just make me happy on the inside. That's why sometimes folk will talk about you. Because God is gathering a crowd. He's gathering those that are non-believers. He's gathering those that don't believe that it's going to happen. And when it looks impossible, God is setting the stage. Good God of my I don't know about you, but I was excited about this story. Listen to the word of God. The Bible said, tell your neighbor, neighbor, the Bible said, amen, in John 11 and 4, when Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not under death. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, what you're going through right now, it's not going to kill you. Because God got his hands on you. And anything that God has his hands on is preserved to God, says that. I wish I could talk to some faith believers right here that everything that God touched, it can't go nowhere till its assignment is finished. Look at your neighbor, said, neighbor, I know God got his hands on me. And because I believe, because I believe, that he has his hands on me. I'm not going to be afraid of nothing. I'm not afraid of the terror by night, nor the moon. Oh, I wish I could talk to somebody. You got to learn how to trust him when you can't see him. Because the Bible lets me know that I can't die before my time. I can't be defeated because he created me. I want you to see something. God was gathering the people around because he knew that sickness was not under death. Huh? Come on, somebody. I'm going to show it to you later on. But he said, for the glory of God. Can I, can I stop right here? Can I stop right here for a second? Can I present to you my argument today? 
that what you are dealing with right now, somebody ought to say it right now, is done for the glory of God. It's not the suffering that God gets the glory in because we all got to face life. But when God get finished, you're going to find the purpose of the suffering. See, you got to understand. He said a generation, amen, he said this generation. So in other words, a generation is about to see the power of God in action. The pandemic, unemployment, crashes, and yet there's still somebody saying, thank you, Jesus. Doctor comes and give you a negative report, but instead of you weeping, you say, thank you, Jesus. They said I wouldn't make it, but I said, thank you, Jesus. They counted you out, but you said, thank you, Jesus. Why? Because the hand of the Lord. I want to ask the question. I want to ask the question. Can you wait for the stage to be set so that God can get the glory out of your situation? <laughs> Did anybody hear that? Are you able to wait? Sometimes on Thanksgiving, my wife will cook a big meal. We call the family, tell them what time we're going to eat. But sometimes the stomach get to growling because you're smelling all the fragrances of the food. And she say, honey, leave those eggs alone. It ain't time yet. Somebody ought to know and tell somebody, it ain't time yet. Still preparing your situation. Still working on the, the exact meal you need. Still working on things that's out of order. Tell your neighbor he's still working. But while he's working, he has his hands on you. Oh, I wish I could talk to somebody right now. Come on, stretch out your hand like this. And say, my son, my daughter, my friend, my neighbor. God's got his hands on you. Woo! Oh, glory, I feel the praise right there. Look at what the Bible said. How many believe what the Bible said? The Bible says they brought him. They brought this child that was pining away. They brought this child who was gnashing from his teeth and also pining away. I wish I could talk to somebody. And it says, and when he saw him, tell your neighbor, neighbor, right at your breakthrough, all hell can break loose. I wish I could talk to somebody. The Bible says that they brought him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground, and he wallowed, amen, in the foaming. What do you mean, preacher? At your moment of breakthrough, it could be your breakdown. Did you hear what I said? See, because you've been praying for some stuff, and now God is approaching that stuff, and the devil is causing a revival. But see, if you don't fall for the trick, I wish I could tell somebody, don't fall for the trick. We're not ignorant of Satan's devices. He knows he can't defeat God, but he'll sure put up a fuss. He'll sure try to fight. He'll sure try to deceive. He'll sure try to discourage you. But guess what? God got his hands on you. <laughs> Why? At the point of breakthrough, it can be a breakdown. You see it all the time. Folk get discouraged. Well, why you ain't coming to church no more? Well, you know, child, I, 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 I just got some other things to do right now. No, that's a sign that you, 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 you're falling apart. But you're looking good anyhow. But deep down on the inside, God is starting to depart because you keep pushing them back. 
because he ain't doing what you want him to do. But I heard the Bible say, wait on the Lord. I didn't hear it say, the Lord waiting on you. Look at this. And because the devil goes crazy when he sees the power of God show up, he begins to activate God's power. And that's when most people give up. But this is a great time of deception because it looks like everything's going wrong. Can I get a witness? <laughs> well, yes, but the next verse tells me something. It tells me, and he said, ask, he asked his father, how long, now I want you to check, oh God, I want you to check this out. Jesus asks a question like he's looking for information. He says to them, how long is it ago since this came upon your son? Now I want you to understand something. The Bible says that when he asked for Thomas, Thomas came and he said, Thomas, I saw you under the, the tree. Thomas was blown out the water. How you know where I was? I wish I could talk to somebody. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he got his hands on you. <laughs> so he says to him, how long has it been? And he said, of a child. And oftentimes it cast him into the fire and into the water. To do what? To do what? To do what? How many times has the enemy tried to destroy you, but you're still here? You ought to have enough evidence. You ought to have enough know-how to understand that God must be somewhere around you. That you have not been destroyed when others couldn't make it, when others couldn't handle it, when others fell out. You ought to know that God finish reading this cast him in the fire into the water what do you mean preacher can I say something that you don't see in the scriptures with all that experience there had to be some scars <laughs> scars are reminders that the enemy didn't win I wish I could talk to somebody. How long since a child? How long since he's been born? Look at the scars. Look at the burns. Look at all that he's gone through. Look at him. And he's still here. Lord, I don't know what you're doing. But you still got me here. <laughs> Look at this. He said to destroy him, but then he turns around and said, but if thou canst do anything, Jesus, if you could do anything, have compassion on us and help us. What are you talking about, preacher? At any given time, the father, now see, this is why when I said to you all that when Jesus said generation, that he wasn't talking to the father. Why? Because most fathers would have left when problems started coming and it looked like he had to do a whole lot of work taking care of a child. But this father stuck in there. This father refused to quit. This father still had hope. This father still believed. I wish I could talk to somebody. <laughs> he said, but he believed that one day, somebody ought to give God a one day attitude. <laughs> He believed that one day God would show himself strong and mighty. Now look at your name and say, I'm talking about real faith. Not that faith that as long as you get what you want, you find in faith. But it's when you don't get what you want, you still got faith. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, God is not a yes man. Because sometimes he'll tell you no. Then where is your faith? Good God of mine. But
But I want to say something here. As I'm about to get ready to come in. Is that the father's pain was real. Come on, tell your neighbor, neighbor, I know what he's talking about now. I know what he's talking about. Now I want you to ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, how do you handle pain? And I'm not just talking about physical pain. I'm talking about emotional pain. When somebody breaks your heart, when somebody discourages you, when you don't get what you want, how do you handle the pain? Can I ask you to ask somebody one more thing? Amen. What is that? Don't waste the pain. Come on, tell your neighbor. Neighbor. Why do you think God says he bottles up our tears? Because he's letting us know don't waste the pain. What do you mean, preacher? Help somebody. You're going to catch that 3 o'clock in the morning. Help somebody. The father in this story had a tender heart but a tortured mind. Let me say that again. The father had a tender heart but a tortured mind. His pain was constant. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? What do you when pain hits your doorstep? What happens when pain visits your house? Uh-huh. He had a tender heart but a tortured mind, but somewhere in his heart of faith, he believed that he, it would get better. Why? Because God had his hands on him. Ah, can I talk to somebody right quick? Listen to this word. Amen. The father, listen, this is, this is king right here. This is king. What do you mean, preacher? This father learned how to manage his pain through faith. Wait a minute. Did you hear that? Managing my pain through faith. Can't manage it on my own. That's why we need Jesus because he's our comforter. So I've got to depend on the Holy Ghost to get me through my experience because I can't do it alone. I wish I could talk to somebody. And this is why we love the book of Job so much because Job told us something. Listen to what Job told us. He said, if a man dies, shall he live again? He said, all the days of my what? My warfare. Look at your neighbor and say, stop looking for a picnic park. Sometimes you're going to go through the demilitarized zone. You're going to go through the pieces of land that got landmines and bombs and, and, and shooters and snipers. Uh, but you got to learn how to be prepared and do what? And serve. <laughs> and look at what he says. He said, I will do what? I will wait until my what? And my what? Somebody say, change and release. It shall come. Whew. Look at this, look at this, look at this. So sometimes our pain is so great that words can't help us. I want to tell a quick story. I was invited to a man's house whose son had died. This man was a pastor. But when his son died, he gave up the pulpit. Didn't want to preach no more. But I showed up along with another pastor that invited me. And immediately he didn't want to talk to me. He said, well, I, I, I really don't want to talk about it. I, I, I really don't talk about it. He said, because I don't need a whole lot of scriptures. And you know what I told him? I said, I ain't got no scriptures for you. Because you can't hear a scripture. I come to bring you the present, the ministry of presence. What do you mean, preacher? I'm presenting myself and my story. <laughs> See, sometimes you can't preach to people. You just got to be there for the person. And see, when, they, when he brought his son, they were trying to do a whole lot of show. But the man didn't need a show he needed some presence. Oh, I, I wish I could talk to somebody. 
And so they became ineffective because when people are going through their deepest hurt, words can't satisfy. Only God can touch the pain. Only God can heal the wound. Only the balm of Gideon can show. Amen. Because sometimes you just got to be there and be still and watch God because his hands what about this pain I'm coming in I'm coming in because God uses pain to be a witness to the world because our greatest witness to the unbeliever is how do you handle pain we all know how to handle the good times we take pictures But when we don't have good times, the camera got dust on it. But you know what? I just thought of something just then. We should take some pictures when we're going through so that we can remember where God brought us from. We take pictures of good times and remember when good times happen. Sometime when the tears rolling down up, each other, let's take a selfie. Tears running down your face. Take, take, a, take, a, take a selfie. And then as time go by, and God break that you. Pull that picture out. Say, look at what good things the Lord has done. Mm. Let me read this and I'm coming in. I pray that you got something out of this word today. Because see, in your most difficult time, because you understand the outcome, that's why we read Job, because we understand the outcome. And guess what happens? We understand that God's grace is sufficient. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, God's grace is sufficient. Look at what this verse says. It says here, and Jesus said, if thou canst believe, If thou canst believe, all things. Now, I, 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 I was meditating over this, this particular portion of text. And God highlighted all things. And you know what he shared with me? He said, all things didn't mean your answers. But whatever the thing turned out to be, you're going to be all right. Paul said, I see the henchmen coming. Now there's laid up for me. He, he, didn't, he didn't do what? He didn't start crying and talking about, oh God. He said, there's a crown laid up for me. Yeah. Look at the Hebrew boys. Said, King, we, we're not careful, but we understand this. If God don't deliver, yet he will deliver. Yeah. See, what are you going to do with somebody that got real faith? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you walking in a fantasy? Or do you got the real deal? Come on, tell your neighbor and respond and say, I've got the real deal. Because I've been through this and I've been through that. And through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've been on the mountain and I've been in the valley. And guess what? I've learned to trust in Jesus. I had a whole lot and didn't have a whole lot. And guess what? I learned. Two more minutes. Straightway. Listen to what happened. The Bible says, and straightway, amen. Where am I? I don't even read I don't even know where I'm at. Don't even look at that no more now. Uh, I'll just leave it right there. I'm, look at this. <laughs> look at this. I, I know, I know, because I, I can't have seat on my glasses on. Listen to this. He says, Lord, straightway the father cried out and said with tears, he said, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. How many of y'all know Jesus knew that? That's why sometimes people will get healed did not have faith. But then Jesus deals with this man, but he talks about faith. 
That's because he knew he had to. But see, what you got to understand, sometimes that human side of us will try to mix up in our faith. And he said, Lord, I believe, but help mine unbelief. Sometimes our mixture could be off. You got faith, but doubt seems to be just as even as your faith. But Jesus charged him to let your faith have more power than your doubting. And he said, what? You'll see that God has his hands on you. If I'm remembering correctly, there's a song that says something about God has his hands on you. I don't know if Brother Mike knows that song, but I, 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 I know as I close, I come to encourage somebody that God has his hands on Despite what you may be feeling in the natural, you are at the point of your breakthrough and not your breakdown because God has his hand on you. Can I pray for you this morning that your faith will not falter. The Bible shows me that Jesus spoke to that spirit. And guess what? Can I, I want to say this as we close. The Bible says when they saw Jesus talking to the man, the father and the son, the Bible says they came running. What happened? What, I asked God, what happened? The Lord, the Spirit of the Lord said to me, he said when Jesus rebuked the, gener the people, they stopped following him until they heard the thundering voice. Thou dumb spirit, come out of him. See, people are going to come running when they see God move on your behalf. Don't worry about the song. Just play something back. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Bow your heads. No, you play, brother. You play. You hear me? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this great opportunity. Don't play that because I'll I get sued. Play the organ. I want you to understand something. That you are at the point of breakthrough. Your body might be racked with pain. You may have suffered loss. You might have had some things that came into your life that were so unaware that's dealing with life. But I stand before you today to give you a word from God. And that word is God has his hands on you. Gladys, I want to tell you something. Your servitude towards God and his house and his people has not gone unnoticed. Sometimes our payday doesn't come like we think, but there's a great reward coming. I don't know about you, but Mother Gloria, God didn't bring the 2020 back, but he gave you a greater insight. See, that's what I'm talking about, God answering in all things. Yes, this week, I thought about the foremans and how they handled their loss. And even going through a test right now, but yet God has his hands on you. Don't ever doubt the presence of God and to our visitor though you may not understand it all and many setbacks but God has his hands on you you and I got to believe this even when we don't understand this that he's a present help all the time Bow your head, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this great opportunity of being able to present this glorious gospel to such a great cloud of witnesses. 
We pray that, Father, this word did not drop on deaf ears, but somebody were able to bring forth their bowl of faith and bring forth that mixture to be able to add the word to their faith. Because, God, we know that fantasy does not work. And so, God, with these truths today, I want to bring clarity and understanding to the hearts of your people that God has his hands on you. And Father, in the name of Jesus, let them see that you are setting the stage. Ah, when the enemy looked like he's, amen, in an uproar and even looked like he's winning, God, let them know that your hand is on them. I ask this simple prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God a hand clap, please. If you're not saved and you want to be saved, I want you to lift your hands, amen. I'll, I'll see, amen, the, the presence of God, but God will see your hand lifted up. And I pray that you'll receive this prayer. Say, Lord, I desire to be saved. I heard your word. And I've allowed circumstances and situations to hinder me from believing in you as a savior. But God, in hearing this word today, I want to come to you as boldly as I know how and ask you to forgive me. And I receive your dear son Jesus as my personal savior. If you meant that prayer and you believed it in your heart, I want you to know you're saved right where you are. Give God a praise as the organist just plays something for the glory of God. As we close out, I pray you've been blessed. Come on and give God a great hallelujah. Amen.